Indian drums, war drums, throbbing over the purple sage and cactus in the southwest America of 1886, throbbing with the voice of one man, Geronimo. For where the long shadows reach down from cragged mountains and fall across endless mesas, the beat of the Indian war drum means terror in the land and fear of the wrath of the avenging Apache, Geronimo. Tonight, on the Cavalcade of America, DuPont presents the story of Geronimo and the last of the Indian Wars. Our star is Kenneth Delmar of the Cavalcade Players, portraying the role of Captain Leonard Anderson. Indian drums, war drums, throbbing with the angry voice of Geronimo. Why does white man still live? Geronimo say kill all. White man surrender, Geronimo. This man, his wife. Show mercy to her, Geronimo. Kill me when you please, but pity her. Why, Geronimo, show pity to white woman. Did white man show pity to Geronimo's mother? She murdered. Why Geronimo not take eye for eye? He had nothing to do with your mother's being killed. So, Geronimo... We have nothing to do with your wife being killed. Oh, thank you, Geronimo. Thank you. No. Geronimo, I have nothing to do with white woman. Personally. He turned white woman over to his brave. No. Take it away. No. Sarah. No. No, Geronimo. Kill me here with my husband. Sarah. Never mind, John. John, grab operator escape. Uh, uh. Goodbye. <laughs> Billy Moore, the telegraph operator at Red Gulch, calling for help. Geronimo, right in there now. All right, better get Captain Anderson. Yes, I'll take the rest of the message. Captain Anderson, sir. Yes, Geronimo's on the warpath again. Where's that Indian now? Uh, Red Gulch, sir. Red Gulch? It's over 80 miles away. Contact Captain Lawton at Fort Boy. Ask him to do all he can. Looks like Geronimo's headed into his territory. Yes, sir. Ask him if he's heard from that Mexican, Governor Torres, yet. Right, Captain Anderson. If he hasn't, tell him that Torres, by a treaty with our government, has promised 5,000 Mexican soldiers to help us capture Geronimo. 5,000, yes, sir. What about Red Gulch? Ah, oh, those poor devils. Can't do anything for them now. Well, anyway, there's one thing to the good. What's that, Captain? General Miles has been ordered by Washington to take full charge of the capture of Geronimo. He's expected here tonight. General Miles, sir? All the way from Montana? That's right. Now we'll see some action. Now we can get started stamping out every one of these sneaking, murdering red devils. Uh, that's no way, sir. It's the only way to handle them, without mercy. They don't understand any other... Well, hello. Hello, Leonard. Oh, I'm, I'm interrupting. No, no, that, that's all right, Elizabeth. I heard you think shouting something about stamping them out. What's the matter? You got rattlesnakes in the army post? Worse. Geronimo again. Oh. Anything special on your mind? No, just a visit. Well, good. Come on into my office. You might telegraph Lawton that Miles is on his way, Sergeant. Very good, sir. More trouble from Geronimo, huh, Lenny? Uh, he just raided Red Gulch to the south. More killed. More tortured. I tell you, Elizabeth, there's only one way to deal with these Indians. Step on them without mercy. The only good Indian is a dead Indian. You seem very sure of yourself, Captain. Are you laughing at me, Elizabeth? Laughing at you? Why, no. You are, I can tell. Whenever you call me captain, you're laughing at me. Put down that book. What are you doing? Uh, Leonard, this is one of your military textbooks. I was just trying to find out where in it you'd gotten your strange ideas about Indian fighting. Listen, Elizabeth, I am right. I'm not the only one who says Indians have got to be handled with an iron fist. Do you know what Joplin told me? He said that Joplin? in all the years... You mean the government agent? Well, after all, a government Indian agent knows Indians. It's his business. And you really think he knows his business? Why, he's more than half the cause of all the trouble. Nonsense. You think feeding Indians on rotten beef, dismissing their protests with a gun butt and insulting their chiefs, that's with a gun butt and insulting their chiefs, is going to bring back order to the Southwest? Elizabeth Joplin's been government agent here more than ten years. He's been dealing with Indians for more years than you've lived. I think he knows his business. 
Wait till General Miles gets here. He'll prove the point. He'll prove the point, all right, all right, but not the way you think. Oh, well. Listen, dear, I'm having supper with General Miles tonight over at Joplin's. Want to make any bets? Hmm? <laughs> we'll see whether I know what I'm talking about or not. One thing I know you'll find out is that there's lots more to Indian fighting than fighting Indians. <laughs> Hey there, stranger. You and that Indian better get off Mr. Joplin's veranda. Good evening, Captain. Don't you know you're sitting on Bert Joplin's veranda? Well, that's what I know. He doesn't allow Indians up here. What are you doing here, anyway? Well, Captain, first place, neither me nor my Indian friend here could remember any law against sitting here. Huh? And second place, I was invited to dine here. This looked like a likely place to wait for my host. That seem reasonable? Hey, who are you? My name's Miles, son. Miles? Uh, full name, Nelson A. Miles. Oh, my apologies, General. I didn't recognize you, sir. At ease, Captain. Yes, sir. Next time, don't let the buckskin fool you. I always found it easier on a man in the saddle. Uh, you Captain Anderson? Yes, sir. Straight out of Harvard, aren't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I heard about you all the way up in Montana. First assignment, I believe. Yes, sir. Well, son, out on the frontier, we don't always wear a uniform. Sometimes gets in the way of a friendly talk. Oh, uh, you know Black Eagle here? No, sir. Well, he's got a brother you might have heard of. Name of Geronimo. Geronimo? Well? I beg pardon, sir? Well, Black Eagle is a friend. I always manage to shake hands with my friends when I meet him. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, howdy, Black Eagle. Evening, Captain. Oh, oh. Who's this? Howdy, Captain. Is this our host, Joplin? Yes, General Miles. Evening, Mr. Joplin. General Miles is here. Delighted to meet you, General. <laughs> Sorry not to be here when you arrived. I, I hope that you'll find the supper was worth waiting for. <laughs> Seems to me I've heard quite a bit about you, Joplin, about you and your suppers. Yep, that's something I aim to clear up for the evenings much older. Oh, I, uh, I hadn't realized my vittles were so famous, General. Hope you don't mind my inviting Black Eagle here to eat with us tonight. Oh, no, no, of course not. Glad to have him. Always an extra plate at my table. <laughs> Black Eagle. Food good. Not Indian food. Indian food bad. What do you mean Indian food's bad? Why? Well, you eat the same beef we ate tonight? No. Indian food make braves sick. Bad food make braves mad. Well, you can't say as I blame him. And you, Captain Anderson? Well, sir. Well, he's lying, General Miles. Well, those engines can't rig up the excuse of bad food for going on the war path? The engines don't go on the war path for nothing, do they? Now, I'm, I'm sorry to say this while Black Eagle's my guest, General, but you and I both know that most engines are bad, clean through. Why, Geronimo's his brother, and he's like uh, careful with the talk, Jock. Why, every engine hates the white man like the devil hates the truth. India no hate white man. Indian hate cheating. You say I cheat you. I say you give bad meat for good meat price. No man can say that to my face and live. Careful, Joplin. Black Eagle speak truth. You lying redskin. Well, you're no better than your murdering brother. There's only one kind of talk that you understand. Drop that gun, Joplin. Look out, Black Eagle. Why are you... Is he badly hurt, Anderson? Looks that way, sir. Take him to the hospital immediately. This Indian's life must be saved at all costs. Yes, General Miles. Easy there. Well, that clears up one part of this business, Joplin. There'll be no more cheating of the engines at Fort Apache. You're under military arrest in my personal custody. 
And you better pray you didn't hurt Black Eagle too badly. If that engine dies, Joplin, you hang. I didn't hear you come in. How is he? Oh, he's much better. Bullet just grazed his shoulder. He'll be all right, then? Good as new in a few days. Look worse than it was. I always thought Joplin was contemptible and mean, but I never knew how really low he was. That well, man should... hold on, Elizabeth. Whoa. He'll get his. General Miles is taking good care of him. I know. He's already been arrested. It just makes my blood boil to see Indians treated that way. Well, it makes my blood boil to see white people treated the way Geronimo treats them. Well, I think you'll find General Miles knows how to deal with his kind, too. Uh, maybe. Well, you're learning, Captain. I expect to hear you tell me soon that there's a third kind of Indian, besides a bad one and a dead one. Now, wait a minute. Stop calling me Captain, or I begin calling you Miss Thorne. I'm sorry, Leonard. You've really done a fine thing for all of us in tending Black Eagle. You've given us a good friend. Well, I, I guess I better leave and let you get well ahead with your duties. Goodbye. Where are you going? Back to the ranch. Oh. You think that's a good idea? Hadn't you better stay at the fort here? Well, it's only a short ride back home. What do you mean, stay here? Well, I don't know, Elizabeth. I'd just feel better if I knew you were safe. Listen, Easterner, I'm 19 years old in Indian country, and I wouldn't miss a good night's sleep for a whole tribe of Geronimo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elizabeth, at least let me ride back with you. Say, you're, you're really worried, aren't you? Oh, you must know I am, Elizabeth. If anything should happen to you, I... I... Leonard. Though half the reason I love you is because I've got a hunch you're probably better able to take care of yourself than I am. Darling, you deserve a kiss for that. Now I gotta find Dad. He's he's waiting for me. Sweet. Take care of yourself. Don't worry. Good night, Lenny. Good night. General Milesen. It is, Adjutant. What have you got for me? Full report, sir. Oh, Twelve pages. Uh, I suppose you just tell me what it says. Well, sir, Geronimo's raiding mostly in southern Arizona, sir. Yesterday morning, he struck at the Santa Cruz Valley, about 30 miles southwest. Started moving west. Yeah? Looted the Martin Farm, stampeded about 1,000 head of cattle. Oh, getting close, huh? Must need food bad. Late last night, he plundered the Thorn Ranch. That's about ten the miles The Thorn away. Ranch? Yes, sir. He shot and killed two hands. There was a girl on the ranch, Elizabeth Thorn. They seized her and are holding her hostage. Do we know which way they're headed? Yes, sir. South to Sierra Madras. Sir. Orderly. Yes, sir. Have assembly sounded immediately. Yes, sir. Tell Captain Anderson to report to me at once. Yes, sir. Adjutant, sir. Uh, telegraph this message to General Torres, Yaki River Junction, Mexico. You ready? Yes, sir. Geronimo fleeing south into Sierra Madres. In conformity, Mexican-American treaty, suggest you move all available troops at vicinity. Signed, Miles, General U.S. Army. Got that? Yes, sir. And now then, uh, wire Colonel Wade at Fort Boy. Geronimo moving your area. Immediate capture imperative. Signed, Miles. Get those off at once. Yes, sir. Reporting, sir. Uh, Captain Anderson, I have an assignment for you. An important assignment. And a dangerous one. I want you to bring back Geronimo here alive. You think you can? I mean, do you think you can take him alive? I think I can, sir. And thanks for the chance. Now, you know what I want, Captain. I want that engine pursued and pursued until he knows there's no way out except surrender. You understand that? I think I do, General. Uh, no, you don't, Captain. But I think you will, in just a moment. Oh, how's Black Eagle? Is he sound enough to ride? Yes, sir. Good. Now, he knows the Sierra range like the palm of his hand. 
Geronimo's fled to those mountains. Take Black Eagle with you, Captain. You'll be valuable. And, uh, Captain Anderson. Yes, sir. Geronimo raided within a few miles of the fort last night. What area, sir? The Thorn Ranch. What? He took Elizabeth Thorn off with him as hostage, Captain. Yes, sir. All right. That's all, Captain Anderson. You have your orders. <laughs> Listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America presenting the story of Geronimo and starring Kenneth Delmar of the Cavalcade Players. The Cavalcade of America is brought to you each Monday by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. More than two days riding ahead of us. What's that, sir? What? No, nothing, Sergeant. Nothing, just talking to myself. You think the girl's still alive, sir? Forget the girl, can't you? Don't talk about her. Sorry, sir. I didn't mean anything by it, sir. Captain Anderson, sir. What is it? Men, sir. Well? 18 hours in the saddle, sir. Can't keep us up day after day. Soldiers can if Indians can, Sergeant. Here we are, kids, sir. We're ambushed. Company dismount. Prepare to fire. Shot two men, sir. Riley and Stevenson. And we never saw them. Where can they hide? Seven men dead in two weeks, and we've never seen the men who did it. Leave these two horses here, Sergeant. Very good, sir. Tell the man to destroy them. Can't spare the water. Captain Anderson, sir. We'll have to stop till we find water. Nonsense. Sir Thompson and Ryan and one other. Yes? The son's got them, sir. They'll go raving mad. Got to push on. We've got to. We've got to ride that Apache right into the ground. Captain Anderson. Yes, Sergeant. Here I am. I captured a deserter from Geronimo's band. Captain. Where is he? Right out in the ledge there. Can't stand, sir. Man's dying. Now take me to him. I've got to talk to that Indian. Now this way, sir. I almost stumbled over him. I don't think he'd live long. Here he is, sir. Lift his head up. Mm. Yeah, drink this. That's enough. Tell me, where's Geronimo? Higher. Up a high crag. By Timberline. Is the white girl with him? Geronimo. Say, killer. Before give up. Sergeant, you see where this Indian came from? No, sir. He's lying here when I found him. Where is Geronimo? Point to where he is. Up, Craig. Up. I. There. Sergeant, you stay with this Indian. We can't attack Geronimo. He'll kill Miss Thorne. I'm going after him myself. But, Captain, they'll kill the girl as soon as they They're see They're bound you. to kill her anyway unless we take a chance. Get along down the mountain to camp. Well, can't I go with you at least, sir? No. Now, Wait. I'll go with Black Eagle. He knows these peaks and he knows Geronimo. Sergeant, I'll stay with this man. Find Black Eagle and bring him here. Step careful, white doctor. Soon will there be God. There he stands now, back against the tree. Girl, sleep on leave. Black Eagle, you take care of the guard, understand? I do. Count five slowly. At five, 
Strike. I'm going to get the girl. Lucky go go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh. Elizabeth. Who's that? Shh, darling, quiet. It's me, Leonard. Oh, my love. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Liza, can you walk? Oh, now that you're here, Leonard, I feel as if I could skip. I could dance down the mountain. Shh, listen to me. Down the slope, you'll find Black Eagle. He's our friend. But where are you going? To Geronimo. Oh, no, you won't. Hurry to Black Eagle. If I don't call in five minutes, you're to head straight down the mountain with Black Eagle without waiting. Promise. <laughs> Kiss me. All right, my love. I promise. Geronimo. I am Geronimo. Stand where you are. I am Captain Anderson, U.S. Army. I'm unarmed. I come to ask you to surrender. You come without guns to see Geronimo? I trust you, Geronimo. I, a soldier, trust you. I call on you to surrender. Oh, I know no trick. You can trust me. I have your brother with me. Black Eagle stands within call. He will vouch for me. Black Eagle... Black Eagle here, Geronimo. You'd better surrender, Geronimo. Surrender? Surrender to the men that killed Geronimo's mother? To the men that cheat Geronimo and his people on the reservation? That feed them bad horse meat? Trick them? Lie to them? Starve them? Cheat them? Experience teaches the white man and the red, Geronimo. The white man knows far better than he did how the Indians should be treated. The white man took Indians' country... Now they take his liberty, break his laws. This country, these hills and sand, this was Indian land where Indians could hunt and live. White man steal them from Indian. Now you ask me to surrender to white man. Make your choice, Geronimo. Surrender to the U.S. Army or be captured by the Mexicans. After what you've done in Mexico, you can expect no mercy there. You promise liberty for me and my braves? I promise you nothing but a fair trial, Geronimo. You'll always be sure of that in America. You must take the white man's word that your land and liberty will be protected. Now, for the sake of your braves, Geronimo, for your own sake, surrender. White captain, speak truth, Geronimo. You too, Black Eagle. So, Geronimo surrender only to biggest white officer. Where is General? You have General at Mountain's Foot in two weeks. Geronimo, he surrender. Two weeks? I'll have General Miles at the Mountain's Foot in two days. Oh, cannot do. We'll take three days ride to Mountain Foot, two days to General's camp, two days ride back again. No, we'll send the message by reflected lights, Geronimo. With our lights, with our heliostat... We can send the message from this crag to the base camp in 15 minutes. So. We, we see these lights through the air. Geronimo has thought these lights, the light spirit. And that this light spirit was with the white man. The white man cooks strong magic, Geronimo. Strong enough to keep the white man and the Indian at peace with each other. From this moment on, for all time. In tonight's story of chemistry at work in our world, DuPont tells you about camphor. To most people, camphor means mothballs, or perhaps an old-time camphor bag worn around the neck to keep colds away. But ever since a young American printer named John Hyatt mixed camphor with nitrated cotton cellulose and made the first plastic, camphor has been a material of the highest... Imp Hyatt was looking for a material to take the place of elephant ivory in the manufacture of billiard balls. 
What he discovered was nothing less than the first synthetic plastic in America and a whole new industry. From this camphor containing plastic, the chemist today makes your fountain pen, your comb, your toothbrush handle, the fittings on the instrument panel of your car, and a long list of other products ranging from motion picture film to the non-scuffed pyrolin plastic heels of a lady's slipper. Natural camphor is distilled from the wood of camphor trees on the island of Formosa, thousands of miles away across the Pacific Ocean. The trees may be grown in this country, but efforts to transplant them commercially have never met with great success. And we need camphor. More than five million pounds of it a year. A failure in America's camphor supply at this time would be a catastrophe felt throughout the business world. If Americans reading their newspapers tomorrow morning should learn that there was no camphor, all of us would feel the consequences almost immediately. We know what one consequence would be, higher prices. In 1918, refined natural camphor sold for as high as $3.75 a pound. Today, however, thanks to the research chemist, there's little danger of a camphor shortage in the United States, for the DuPont Company alone can manufacture most of the camphor the country needs. Twenty-three years ago, DuPont built a small plant at Deepwater, New Jersey, to find out if it might be possible to make synthetic camphor commercially from raw materials readily available in America. Manufacture on a large scale began eight years ago, and today this deep water plant, the only one of its kind, can satisfy the country's normal needs. Since DuPont has been making it, the price for the industrial grade of camphor has been steady at around 35 cents a pound. How is this American camphor made? From southern pine trees. Turpentine from these pines arrives at the factory in purified form as pinene, a colorless liquid. The pinene is made into camphene and the camphene into flake camphor. If the present national emergency had struck us a few years ago, we might be paying exorbitant prices for camphor by now and facing a severe shortage. As things are, we have little cause to worry. And for that, we may thank the chemist who brings us, in the words of the DuPont Pledge, Better things for better living through chemistry. 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 Next week on the Cavalcade of America, our star will be Agnes Moorhead. Our story is City of Illusion, a radio play based on the novel by Vardis Fisher, a powerful drama centered about the Comstock Lode. The most fascinating character of that period was Eileen Bowers, and it is her story we bring you against the background of a fabulous bonanza in Colorado about the middle of the 19th century. In our story of chemistry at work in our world, we will tell you how chemistry is a time saver in America today. We hope you'll join us at the same time next Monday when DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. In support of Kenneth Delmar and the role of Leonard Anderson on tonight's program were the Cavalcade players with Jeanette Nolan as Eliza, Everett Sloan as Black Eagle, John McIntyre as General Miles, and Edwin Jerome as Geronimo. Our play was written by Peter Lyon. The orchestra and the original musical score were under the direction of Don Voorhees. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.